Opera SM here for another Battle of the Four Tribes Part 1 deck tech. This is for node 3.1, uh, Kapala, who has 700, or excuse me, 173 hit points. It has uh, mana bonus gains of plus 3 in white and blue, and 2 in green. It's loyalty ability for 6, create 2 1 1 blue merfolk tokens with hexproof then increase the mana cost of the first spell on your opponent's hand by two, as Lars uh, brought up in the From the Ashes slack. It will not activate this ability if you don't have any spells. So we have built a spellless deck in order to keep those annoying Hexproof folks off the board. So I kind of combined two different ideas. Uh, the deck that Lars presented, which had several creatures with low toughness for that secondary that we have to meet. The other one is it's popper, so it has to be common and uncommon. So combine um, three different creatures with toughness three or less that have the ability to bounce creatures back to the opponent's hand so they have to keep recasting them and can't do much of anything else. And then we also played um, uh, Night of Autumn, the 3-2 uh, the I think it's called Night of Autumn, the 3-2 uh, um, Dryad Knight that uh, destroys a non-land uh, support your opponent controls, and you gain four life, and then if they don't have that, it gets plus two, plus two. So those are four creatures with toughness four, or tough, excuse me, toughness three or less. And then we have uh, six supports, in the deck I'm playing with Teferi because I'll get to his loyalty abilities later, but his ultimate can basically just keep our opponent's board wiped. Um, but I have the four blue aligned guild gates. I have the 10 drop uh, gate that converts two for each gate and gate support you have up to six. And then I have a guild summit, which lets us whenever it or gate comes in, draw a card and then we gain mana up to three equal to the number of gates we have. So we should be able to turbo uh, ramp up into Teferi's loyalty abilities, which are great. We can also use it to return creatures to opponent's hand, make them cost more, though we probably won't need that too much. We can also draw four or gain an extra loyalty, but we, we really have it in here is to just turbo ramp up to its plane of in chaos ability to make the Nature's Zalfir's Fate Token, which, if I can click on this correctly, uh, whenever you draw a card, if your opponent it loses a reinforcement, if they can't, they exile a creature. If they can't, they exile a support. If they can't, increase the cost of the cards in their hand by one. So we're just going to bounce crap back to their hand until we get this ultimate out and then make it so they can never cast anything. So this is kind of a fun prison style deck and let's get going so we're going to get simic guildgate out over azorius guildgate first and azorius gives us better mana gains and we actually have better mana gains than the opponent so we're going to do that then get our uh guild summit out actually it might be worth just getting the guild summit out first so then we're drawing cards off of these other ramp spells I think I'm going to do that to make sure I can draw into bounce creatures to make sure to have them on the board. So let's see. I can get a white match, which will give us six because we get plus four in blue, plus three in white, two in green, one in red, and then minus two in white. Or black, excuse me. So let's see. Uh, white match is probably going to be the best here. Um, could also get a red match, which doesn't do a whole lot for us. So yeah, let's just take this white match for now. Maybe we'll get a green match with a drop. Nope, but that's okay. All right, Gateway Plaza. I couldn't remember the name of that one. I like this guy a lot. I think um, there's, um, there's a 12 drop rare gate that I think is better than in a lot of sort of builds. Um, I'm doing this in a two color deck. I usually really like it only in a one color deck because then you can convert six up to that single color, but I, I still wanted to play it as another gate. I was looking at maybe playing a disable support or something, maybe like cast out, but 
since we're bouncing so much stuff, that didn't make a lot of sense. I thought maybe um, in Bolas' clutches, but I think how that's programmed now, you can't take something unless if you already have three or more creatures. So uh, we just played this as the last filler, but that could maybe be a different different support. Um, when people played it with Karn or with access to Black, they were playing it with Blightcaster, which is a pretty cool thought. All right, let's see. We can get a red into a red and loyalty matches. Um, what else? There's a loyalty match. I think we're just gonna take the red and loyalty for right now. Maybe we can get a green match off of this too. Yep, awesome, cool. And we're starting to get our supports in. That's wonderful. And then we'll start drawing cards with mana on them, get our engine going here. All right, so he does have some of those annoying hexproof things, but great. We do have one of our guys, Deadeye Recaller, which uh, he will only bounce stuff if we have raided, so we might wait on that a little bit. So let's see. Uh, we can get loyalty into blue which is pretty good so that's probably what we're gonna do there's another blue match we could do up on top but I think the loyalty into blue is better because again we're just trying to turbo ramp into the last ability Great, we're getting some conversions, which is wonderful. Um, so we're not in too much danger of dying yet. We're actually already at 11 loyalty as well. So our bounce, our bounce creatures might not even come into effect. Um, just if you, I love to ferry just turbo ramping into the ultimate because it can just be so, so, so good. Uh, he may get some merfolk tokens out, but this is actually a way to deal with those merfolk tokens as well, which is pretty cool. So let's see, we can get a blue match here for seven mana, potentially get a green match on the top off of that as well. Um, black match, which is our worst color. So let's just go ahead right now and take the blue match so I don't take forever on this. Uh, good, there's an exclusion mage and an academy journey mage that can bounce a creature without targeting it, which is great. So that will be good. Um, oh, oh, Kai Kapala. Kapala can be a pain in the butt too. So not only do we want to build in a way where we're not going to have him activate his loyalty ability to... Um, to get merfolk and make our spells cost more, but Kapala also taxes the crap out of your spells and makes your spells cost five more. So going spellless in 3-1 is definitely the way to go if you can figure out a way to do it. Um, we only need one guild summit, so what I'm actually gonna do a little trick you can do is if you have stuff that you know is gonna drain mana, just freeze a card that you want to have on the top of your deck. And then, um, It'll drain mana from that instead of another card uh, when you match stuff. So, cool little trick. Let's see, our loyalty is up to 14, almost up to 21. So we're going to do Exclusionary Mage, and we're going to return their Kapala back to their hand. If we can find that much loyalty, then start to get Academy Journey Mage charged up. And then... Did I rig hauler after that? Yeah, because I think we want Journey Mage so we can bounce their first creature, which will be the token after that. Actually, we'll do uh, the Dead Eye Rig Hauler to hit their other creature to make the token go into the first slot. So let's see, got some good blue matches because we're doing some wonderful blue conversions here. Uh, we can, we don't want to do this match in the bottom that it's telling us to do. That's not very smart, Greg. We don't want to kill our own support. Um, 
but what we can do is get a match for here. Get enough loyalty to bounce something. Yeah, and Guild Summit with the Guild Gates is just great. So we're never going to be running out of cards here. Just keep getting bounce spells to keep bouncing junk back to their hand. And let's see. We'll just play this Night of Autumn. Does he have any supports on the board? Nope. So it's just going to be a big attacker for us, which is great. And we have 20 loyalty, so next turn we're going to be able to go off. And then we have more than enough creatures to, to deal with his stuff. Um, I'm going to wait on the rig hauler um, so I can have a creature that's attacked. And then I can journey mage his token after that. I might not even have to do that because we're going to start drawing a bunch of cards and then just <laughs> taxing the crap out of his stuff so he can't do anything. So let's see here. Uh, we can get um, blue match, white match. So we want the blue over the white. Um, I think we're just going to take this blue match and hope to get a white match maybe. All right, thanks again, Wires, for this great pointer that uh, don't play spells, and uh, Madrin for having the wonderful idea of, I think he did it on Karn, did a cool Karn Gates build with a lot of Gates Matters cards. Um, but, uh, yeah, I love just turbo ramping into Teferi's uh, loyalty ability, so look at the value we're just going to get here. And... So yeah, we're going to get a ton of creatures on the board, and then he's not going to be able to do much of anything at all. So we've activated that ability. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the match in the middle row to get uh, three white, then three blue. We can dead haul rigor creatures, but I think even before we can start bouncing all the creatures, we're just going to exile a bunch of his stuff, and then he's going to start having everything in his hand taxed. That's pretty cool. So let's see. Let's go ahead and bounce that creature. We're going to draw a card. I think so. Let's see. Um, why not? We'll go ahead and bounce or replace Journey Mage with this guy. Now his token's bounced. This guy gets bigger. Now we're just taxing all the cards in his hand. That's pretty sweet. Look at this value. I love value. <laughs> Nothing like value in the morning. All right. Let's see. So we'll hold the rigor in hand. Maybe, no, we don't even need to do that because uh, he's just going to bounce. Um, we can just exile anything that he casts now. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and just take the uh, white and the red here because that's the easiest thing I can think, and it's pretty much autopilot to win now. So We don't want to return anything because we've already cast more than enough creatures, right? Yep. So not now. This is nice too because even though I didn't record ahead of time uh, what the deck was, um, you have the uh, picture of of what it is, because I think we've cycled through everything in our deck. 
So let's see, exclusionary mage, I think we're gonna hold off on because we already have what we need and actually what we can do just to try to speed this up, game up a little bit we're just going to go ahead and use the uh, draw cards ability in an extra turn so we can cast more stuff uh, again exclusionary mages we don't necessarily want because they're going to be um, they won't stack with other stuff we already have on the board. Again, we played four creatures here. It's probably better technically if you find some sort of uh, blue blue walker that you can uh, run seven supports in. But I like Teferi, and I, I don't mind. It's not a problem having to exile stuff. That's a, a great problem to have, to just have to get rid of cards in your hand because you can't reinforce the stack. But figured redundancy before we get the combo set up to protect ourselves was the good thing to do. All right. So let's see. Do a red match. Maybe what else do we have that we want to do? Um, don't see anything that's a whole lot better for mana. Actually, green. Is green better? No, red's, yeah, green's better than red, so we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. There's probably ways to speed up the clock here too. Like again, I think Madrin was running the uh, the ram and some of the other creatures that key off of how how uh, how big it is based on uh, the number of gates you have. So that probably would be faster than this. But I just wanted to be safe and be make sure I bounced a bunch of creatures to. Uh, Stay alive before I set up my kind of prison lock I have with Teferi. So let's see. Got some blue matches. Whatever. We'll just take this to clear so to keep our supports alive. Yeah, and truth be told, I just want to finish this match because I'm so excited to try my 3-3 deck uh, to basically um, cast a bunch of super cheap creatures and draw stuff and hopefully win turn one. Uh, someone, someone played a version of it and they won turn one, and I am super excited to try it. Um, but we got to get through all this first. So let's see. Um, go ahead and just take that white and black match here. Don't want to bounce anything, thank you very much. I want to win more quickly. Again, again thanks Lars for sharing this, um, this idea to go spellless and to have a bunch of bounce stuff so he can't really do much. And we just saw he did get a creature on the board with some good matches, but then we just immediately exile stuff away. That's just so mean. you so I'm gonna exile let's see blues into blues into whites not quite whatever doesn't really matter let's go ahead and take those blues
Perfect. And then we get the win next turn with our cool spellless gate ramp to fairy bounce prison deck. I like it. Nothing's fun in magic like making your opponent not be able to play magic. <laughs> It's a good thing Greg doesn't have feelings. He might be very upset right now being under this prison lock. All right. Well, thank you all again for watching. This was node 3.1 of the Battle of the Four Tribes Part 1. Hopefully this is helpful to you as a popper build. Um, if you choose to go in direction, just, you know, Gates general direction, bounce general direction, but definitely go in the spellless direction is my recommendation to just make your life on easy mode. All right, take care, everyone.